XPS is performed by irradiating a sample with X-rays of a specific energy. The most common X-ray used for XPS lab-based systems is aluminium. However, not all instruments are limited to aluminium and this spectrum is an example of a silver anode X-ray source which has produced X-rays twice the energy of the standard aluminium anode X-ray gun. And as a result, we are able to see core levels that are not available to the aluminium X-ray based systems. The default element library in CASA XPS has been defined for aluminium and magnesium X-ray guns. And the reason these libraries are defined in terms of the X-ray guns is that the photon energy determines the relative sensitivity for photoemission peaks. So if you change the X-ray source and therefore the energy of the X-rays, then these photoemission lines all appear with different relative intensities and therefore the library needs to present the correct relative sensitivity factors for the given X-ray source. When a spectrum is displayed in the active tile, the element library displays element transition fields based on the X-ray source. In fact, the X-ray source label that is associated with the data and the VAMAS block from which the data is displayed. So if we look at the VAMAS block information, the silver anode is indicated by the source label, and this is coming from this VAMAS block, and the element library will display transitions that match either the string that says any, and that's these OJ lines, or fields that have the silver mono source label. And this library does not have any photo emission lines with the silver source label, so the only transitions listed in this table corresponding to these data are OJ transitions. The reason the element library can still display OJ transitions, even though the element library is set up for aluminium and magnesium, is because these OJ transitions are independent of the photon energy. So although these data were collected using a silver anode, the OJ lines such as this oxygen sequence here are common in terms of kinetic energy to all X-ray sources. The relative position of photoemission peaks changes with the X-ray source in terms of kinetic energy, but in terms of the OJ transitions, these are always at the same kinetic energy. And the reason for this is because when the atoms are excited by a photon of any energy, then the result is an excited state and the emission of an electron with an energy that is characteristic of the photon energy, but the excited state then can undergo a transition which will cause a relaxation resulting in a new excited state, and the difference between the initial excited state and the relaxed state is emitted as a, an electron. And this OJ electron has an energy which is characteristic of these two internal states within the excited atom and is independent of the photon energy. Hence the OJ from oxygen always appears at the same kinetic energy in a spectrum. So while the OJ lines are always available to us, we'll have to load an element library that corresponds to a, a silver anode. So in the casaxps.lbd directory, there's an, a, an element library that has been set up for these photoemission lines from a silver anode. So I select this and I load and then display from this library. Let's go here and just select molybdenum. We get a set of photoemission peaks that complement the OJ lines. So these now are clearly OJ lines that are generated by the silver anode. We've still got the oxygen OJ line here and that's as we'd expect but we also have markers showing peaks that were not available within the aluminium or the magnesium element libraries. These are from deep energies within the molybdenum atom not available to aluminium or magnesium, hence they were not within the original default library. These markers are from the element library and they represent entries in the element library. 
which if we look at the form of the element library, it is an ASCII file, and each row represents one of those markers. So you have a name here, the element transition, you've got the binding energy indicating it's a photo emission line, and the binding energy for that photo emission line. We also have a line shape, and finally there's the relative sensitivity factor which is set to zero, and the source label which is AG, which makes this a library that is associated with the silver anode. This element library is primarily set up for the silver anode so that photo emission lines can be identified. So the need to know that this is a molybdenum 2P rather than some other element is the focus of that library because all the relative sensitivity factors have all been set to zero and this is to indicate that they are as yet unknown to this library so quantification would not be possible. However identifying these photo emission lines is useful so hence this library exists but in terms of quantification that's work yet to be done.